At midnight, I will go out among the Egyptians. Every firstborn creature in the land of Egypt shall die. The firstborn pharaoh who sits on his throne, the firstborn of the slave girl at the hand mill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. Exodus 11, 4, 5. According to Christian belief, right before the moment a person dies, an entity arrives to cut the silver cord that joins the soul to the body. Death appears under the shape of an angel sent by the Lord, a being deprived of all voluntary power. If the person has been good in life, has helped as much as possible selflessly, the figure that presents them is a beautiful angel with the type of white bright of the afterlife. On the other hand, if they have been egotistic and violated the commandments of the Creator, what appears in the moment of their death is a skeletal figure wrapped in a veil of utter and unattainable darkness, accompanied by horrible demons to torment the condemned, whose soul will be painfully separated from their bodies, distorting it with a sickle. This angel at the service of God has one of the most special missions, not to bring disgrace or burden, but peace and tranquility to the souls that are in the transitional state from life to death. It is voluntarily outside of heaven, for it has chosen the task of dividing the soul from the bodies of the recently deceased to guide them to the place they're meant to go, depending on their actions from their earthly lives. As the spiritual guide of souls in the always disconcerting transition from one plane to another, it instills the understanding of what death is and makes sure that demons don't take souls that are not charged with enough evil to their realm. The idea of an angel of death or a figure that arrives to take souls to the abode of the dead has been present in several religions. From ancient Greece with Thanatos, to Hinduism as Yama or Yamaraj, it is a recurrent figure in traditions from many cultures. It has always been seen as a being that's under the direct command of other superior races known as supreme deities. In Christianity and Judaism, the angel of death is known as Samael or Azrael, as Malak Amuat in Islam, and as the Grim Reaper in popular fiction. In other mythologies, the angel of death is imagined as anything from a skeletal hooded creature carrying a sickle to a beautiful woman or a small boy. Despite having different details, the main idea is that a being comes to a person in the moment of their death, causing it or simply watching it happen in order to take their soul to God so it can be judged. At first, it was believed that it was Azrael who brought God a handful of soil to create Adam, therefore earning the title of Angel of Death.
and it was the first angel in charge of knowing nothing less than what happened to the souls that didn't end up in heaven in a natural way. That's how it discovered Shoal, a miserable lower kingdom to which, later on, the fallen angels would arrive, turning it into hell. With the rank of angel, Azrael's mission was to calm the souls in a state of transition, and in this task he would properly raise as the angel of death. He claims that death is not to be feared, for in it lies eternal peace. He is also in charge of rescuing the souls sent to hell. He has renounced to heaven and has a choir or army of angels at his command. It is said he's in charge of protecting the last circle of hell, preventing demons from exiting and guarding the door that keeps them in. He is the angel that escorts all souls to heaven or hell. Despite some theologians place him in a position of authority in the angelic hierarchy in Judaism, he is considered the leader of the choir of powers. In Islam, he is considered a merciless angel that works under God's command. He keeps a papyrus scroll with the names of every man and woman that has existed, exists, and will exist, in which the name of the condemned are circled in black, and the names of the blessed are circled in light. When the day of a person's death is close, a leaf with the person's name on it falls from a tree under God's throne. After 40 days have passed, Azrael must escort the soul of the individual from the body to its final destination, eternal rest. journey. At the start of your steps, I'll be waiting and always walking by your side. As time passes, I'll stay permanently aware to cover you with my black veil. In the moment designated by destiny itself, when you less expect it, and under my imperceptible but constant influence, Fear will occupy your mind, and in the case of the least brave, their minds will be haunted by ideas of suicide. You may have already felt my presence and power, a power you cannot escape nor avoid in any way, nor tell if it's good or bad, for my only quality is to be inevitable. I'm the final ending in what will remain of the universe. When everything's concluded, it is I who will turn the lights off and close the door, leaving behind me nothing but eternal and infinite darkness. <laughs> 